What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading my side mirror covers. But not only that, I'm also going to be upgrading my side mirror indicators to the dynamic style indicators. Now, if you're unsure of what the dynamic indicators are, they are basically the same thing as your normal indicator except now because they are dynamic they follow a certain pattern and they flash a certain way. Previously I did a video showing exactly how to remove the side mirror covers but more importantly how to remove the indicators from the side mirror covers. If you want to see that video be sure to click on the link up here and um, in that video I show you step by step how to remove the indicator from the side mirror cover and also how to remove the side mirror cover from the uh, side mirror assembly. The purpose of this video is to show you guys what the dynamic indicators look like. I also wanted to show you guys what it means when you see dynamic indicators with dual colors. In my case, I went with orange and blue. Now, there are four colors you can choose from total. Okay, so you can either have orange and white, orange and blue, orange and red, or just orange alone. Now, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you have your dynamic indicators fitted. Of course, you can just option to not connect the third wire at all, and then have just the orange indicator alone. And that way it won't display dual colors. If that's not your cup of tea, just don't connect the third wire and you'll just have your normal orange indicator as usual. I'm going to show you guys what it can look like so that you are definitively sure of what it can look like. Because when I first saw this, I was thinking to myself, won't it look weird if you have two colors flashing? And I know that in certain countries and states, it is illegal to have another color apart from orange when it comes to your car's indicators. So be sure to do a little bit of research, be sure you check your local laws so that you do not get in trouble by using another color for your car's indicators. But just to tell you guys, what I've done here is I've trial fitted my side mirror covers and I've also connected the third wire which controls the secondary color of your dynamic indicators I've connected it to my puddle light just here I've connected it from the testing cable and I've then just trial fitted it to the positive of my uh, puddle light and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when I unlock the car what it looks like when I open the door and also what it looks like when I um, indicate with the car running. You're probably thinking if I connect it to a um, switch power source, it'll probably be running the whole time as you drive. But that isn't the case. And that's why I really want to do this video to show you guys what it does, how it works, and how cool it can look. In this case, I've gone with my puddle light because it is the closest positive power source. Here I have the keys right now. And what I'm going to do is simply unlock the car and then show you guys what it looks like with dual color. Okay, so here we go. I've unlocked the car. And there is the secondary light right there. So as you can see, it flashes for a little bit and then it will just switch off again. And there you go. It only stays on for a certain amount of time and then switches off again. Seeing as it's connected to my puddle lights, when I open the door, it will also turn on because my puddle lights are connected to my dome lights. There we go, opening the door. The, my dome lights are on right now. And as you can see, the indicators didn't come on at all. All that comes on is the blue light and some of the orange. You didn't see the dynamic orange um, indicator flash first like you did when I unlocked the car because it's only running the secondary light and then it switches off again. Even though my inside dome light's still on, 
it only turned on for a short while. That's what it looks like. Now I'm going to start the car and indicate right and show you what it looks like with the car running. With my car running. Now I'm going to indicate. There we go. That's me indicating. All I'm doing is indicating at the moment. And as you can see, there isn't a secondary light source. And you're probably thinking when I stop indicating, the blue light will then flash. But it's not going to do that. And that's what I love about this dual color dynamic indicators. They've obviously thought about how they want the lights to flash so that it doesn't um, flash in a way that is kind of annoying or inconsistent to how you would want your indicators to work. And that's why I really wanted to do this video to show you guys exactly how these dynamic indicators work. I've just stopped indicating now. And there's no blue light. When you indicate, only the indicators work. Now I'll close the door with the car running. Even with the car running, and it's connected to my dome light. They do not turn on. Now I'm going to turn on my dome light. My dome lights are turned on at the moment. Even though it's connected to the positive of my dome light, my indicators aren't coming on. So that is a really cool feature. It seems they have really thought about how they want your dynamic indicators to work according to how your car functions. That's very important, guys. Right now, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you disconnect the third wire and not have it connected at all. So I'm going to disconnect it. I've disconnected the third wire now. I'm going to unlock the car again, as you can see. Now only your orange dynamic indicators flash. You do not have that secondary light because you have not connected the extra wire they give you that controls your secondary light source, which is the blue in my case. I'm going to open the car door. Because you do not have the, the third wire connected, it isn't going to flash at all like it did before. So usually it would be connected to my puddle light and then the blue light will flash intermittently because it would read that my puddle lights are working and give me that short um, flashing light. But in this case, it does not do that. And now I'm going to press the hazard lights on just to show you what it looks like with the hazards on. What I'm going to do now is turn off the hazard lights and then reconnect it and show you what it looks like with the third wire connected to your puddle light or any 12 volt switch power source for that matter remember your third wire has to be connected to a positive power source okay as I connected it it turns on straight away so what I notice now is when you connect your third light it will flash all the way to the side here but if you do not connect your third wire it will only flash to this point here when I disconnect it as you can see it doesn't flash here at the moment until I connect I definitely do want to connect my third wire in this case because I do want it to flash all the way and honestly I don't mind that little taste of blue light I think it looks really cool so I'm going to leave it connected now if it is in your cup of tea like I said before move to another table where they're serving your cup of tea and get over it that's how easy it is to install these dynamic indicators they do come plug and play let me show you exactly what I mean this is what it looks like on the inside guys okay as you can see it is just like your standard light this is your two wires originally that controls your indicator light and that simply just connects here and when you refit your side mirror cover that will plug directly into your side mirrors plug that is the power source for your indicator light and then of course you have your third wire which controls your secondary light source if you don't have puddle lights then all you need to do is connect it to a 12 volt switch power source in this case you could probably look for the positive cable of your side mirrors and then simply connect it there in my case I've retrofitted puddle lights so 
I'm just going to use the positive off my puddle light to connect this third wire. And that's right guys, I'm coming out with the retrofit for the puddle light, so be sure to stay tuned for that video. Now I have everything hooked up. All I've done in order to connect the third wire is I've used a set of um, T-taps so that I, if I ever had to remove the side mirror indicators to replace something for whatever reason or if my indicator goes out, then I can simply just unplug the T-connector for my wire tap for the puddle light. For those of you who don't know what a T-tap is, this is basically what it is right here, okay? What you do with this is, so say I'm trying to use the third wire to tap into my puddle light. I then crimp this onto my puddle light positive wire. And then with the third wire from the uh, indicator, I would then crimp that into here and simply connect this together. And that is how you tap into a wire without having to use solder or anything like that. Usually I would solder, but in this case I didn't. Okay, so now we know how everything is connected. It is simply plug and play, guys. Make sure we test it. Beautiful. Okay, so as you can see here, you've got your puddle light. There's the positive. I've tapped into the positive of my puddle light and we're good to go. I've just wrapped some tester tape around it to make it look more factory. Now I'm going to install it. Install it now. Okay. Push the wire behind everything so nothing gets caught. Push the puddle light in a bit here. Okay, so now I've got to get this in here again so that it can hide. Okay, so that's how I want it, like that. So this can sit there, just on top. As long as it's out of the way, we are pretty much good to go, guys. I'll do one more final test before we um, push everything back in. We will do one more final test. Unlock the car, make sure the light works. Okay. Beautiful, okay, then we just push it on and fit it boys and girls. There we go. Done and done. Make sure it's all clipped into place. Make sure your light works and uh, Bob's your uncle guys, there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful and it shows you uh, what the dynamic indicators look like and it helps you better decide whether or not you would like a set of dual dynamic indicators on your W204. Or any other car that has this type of light, you can install these for that car as well. And that brings us to the end of the video. So like always, if you like this video, smash that like button and don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And also don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you're notified every time I release another video. Especially the video with the puddle lights coming out very soon guys. As you can see, I have all the wiring already ready. All I'm waiting for now is my lower case and I can then fit my puddle lights. It's going to be a great video guys, so hope you guys tune in, watch that video so you can retrofit a set of puddle lights for yourself in your W204. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now.